Wow. Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're on a little bit of an adventure. As you can see, I have a sweatshirt on because the weather is finally cold in Wisconsin. It's like 55 degrees. I also have muck boots on because it's raining like every day. So uh, today, my agenda is going to be to hook up this new Predator pump over there in the basement. So um, let me show you what we got going on. So we uh, got some stone and things are moving right along. And now we're gonna be at a little bit of a standstill because over here, as you can see, our basement is full of water. So my goal today is to get the predator in the hole and pump this water out. Uh, not entirely sure where I'm gonna set it up yet or how I'm gonna do it, but we'll figure something out. So stay tuned as we get the predator set up and ready to roll. So I don't know how much you guys will be able to hear me with the Predator rolling, but uh, we got the Predator in, got the hard suction over the wall. This is kind of the best way I could do things until I get this hose uh, to be a little bit more flexible. It's still pretty coiled up from packaging. Um, but yeah, so we got our hard suction in the water, we got a little low level strainer on there, so that'll keep bigger particles from going through the pump. And uh, we're literally at idle right now, but we're moving pretty good water. I'll head over there and show you the discharge. You gotta keep in mind that I believe this pump is rated for like 300 gallons a minute, uh, and it's got a 26 foot lift capability, according to the specs on their site, obviously. But, uh, you know, right now we're probably going, you know, up the full 10 feet to get out of this wall. Plus we got, you know, some oddball stuff going on. Um, I think one improvement that I'm going to make to this right away is to get some sort of uh, an elbow deal maybe on either end so that the water can come in. And then I've got an elbow to point out for the outlet. Um, it's just kind of a pain with all these pinks, obviously. You know, that drops your GPM, that drops your GPM, that drops your GPM, that drops your GPM. So... The better I can make that, you know, the better we'll be, but uh, so far so good. So I bought two of these pumps yesterday. One of them's over at uh, the Green Meadows Project. She had a lot of water in her basement, so um, I got one for over there, and I actually ended up plumbing in a, a three-inch PVC dry hydrant type of a deal, and I was able to pull like a foot of water out of her basement probably in... I don't know, an hour, hour and a half or something with the pump at full, full chooch. Uh, right now, obviously, we're at uh, idle, like I said, because if we go any faster, we start uh, trying to cavitate a little bit down here. So, um, but we're definitely moving from just a minute ago when I panned around, you couldn't see the uh, grade beam or the two posts, but that's there. And you can start to see the footing all the way around. So um, we're definitely moving water. So that's the Predator pump, pretty neat. So you guys can probably hear me a little better over here, but uh, this is our, our discharge. So it's, uh, it's doing pretty good. I got these uh, new boots, which I'm not so happy with because my right foot feels very wet. Uh, and I just got them yesterday, which is the unfortunate part. But uh, so I must have a hole in these brand new Rocky boots that I got from Farm and Fleet. So I'll be taking those back full of crap later to uh, exchange them. But uh, as you can see, we are we are definitely moving a good chunk of water. No doubt about that. It's like two or three inches deep all the way down here. So. That thing is definitely putting out, uh, putting out at least a couple, couple gallons a minute. Man, I can't even find the end. 
That's awesome. Very good. So that is the uh, that is the predator, and uh, this is this is my life right now. So I think that's uh, just about all I got. So so here in Wisconsin we have uh, a code which specifies that we need uh, bleeders put in the footing of the foundation. Uh, and basically all that this bleeder here is, is a four inch drain tile that they put in between when they form this and pour it. What that does is that gives a controlled place for the water inside and outside the foundation to equalize. Now I know a lot of people think, well, hey, we want to keep the water on the outside and not on the inside. And let me explain why we do it that way. So. These bleeders are uh, maybe about every eight feet or so on center in uh, majority of this basement. So uh, as you can see right now, we've actually got water flowing in from the outside of the foundation. And uh, like there's another one, there's another one. Um, and then what we have is on either side of the foundation, inside and outside, we have one run of drain tiles. So you can see that kind of chased around the outside. And what'll happen is all that drain tile will get chased over. And in this house specifically, we have um, like a long skinny utility room that'll sit here and we'll have the sump pit over in the corner. So right now I know they're showing it there, but that's not gonna work. It's actually gonna be over here. Um, and what happens with these bleeders is it equalizes the hydraulic water pressure from the inside to the outside of the foundation. So that you don't have any water on the outside of the foundation pushing in on the foundation or trying to make its way through the foundation. So this gives it a place, basically like a wheat pole, to come through, collect in this tile, and then work its way over to the sump pit where the sump pit will take it up and out. Now the reason that we do that and the, we keep it below the floor obviously is so that we're taking care of the water issues while they're under the floor. Um, obviously some pumps are open on the top, so if you do have water on top of the floor, it'll make its way into the, uh, into the sump pit as well. But we want to try and take care of any of the water problems inside or outside the foundation uh, below floor level so that if this basement were ever to be finished, we don't worry about the finishes in the basement. Um, now with that, we can talk about it over at this window. We've got two window wells behind us. And then we've got our escape well back in this corner uh, for potential future bedroom. Um, in this escape well, you'll see we have a drain tile. And this drain tile goes down and all of this washed stone, there's actually an outer drain tile all the way around the perimeter of this, this house as well. So the bleeders then give the outer drain tile and the inner drain tile a place to equalize to collect that water and ship it over to the sump pit. So um, that's how the bleeders work. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of people go back and forth um, with the bleeders. One thing that I do, I do agree with that I do not like about the bleeders is I do not like how we have a full, nice thick footing on this side and on this side. And then we've got somewhere in the middle, let's just see what the, uh, that the tape measure says, oh, that's not too good. That's only about an inch of concrete on top. Um, however, I know circles are also strong. So uh, leave your info and your input down in the comment section below. And let me know what you guys think about uh, bleeders through the footings of your foundations. That's all I got for you today. It's just a quick question and a quick discussion. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the home build as we uh, take this one and build it start to finish. And uh, like, comment, all that fun stuff as well. So anyway, I'm going to get this place dewatered and get the deck on. We'll talk to you guys in the next video.